Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. The borderline female and their sense of suspiciousness. The borderline female, I think, really stands out with respect to kind of the display of suspiciousness that they create in their environment. Um, the borderline female, as kind of differentiated from a narcissist or a psychopath, similar to personality disorder, at least in the arm of the DSM-4R, they're in the same kind of diagnostic criteria or, you know, a sub-branch within, within that manual. The, um, the borderline really has a very deep sense and fear of abandonment. Um, they are acting I would think from that insecurity and fear quite frequently, if not all the time. Um, an abandonment, abandonment fear is expressed as a real insecure feeling that everything is going to be taken away, the house is going to fall down, um, you know, um, my, my kids aren't going to be healthy and they're going to be sick and they're not going to be able to sustain themselves or you know um, I might be replaced in my family by this person either son or daughter so this fear of them losing their significant other their husband um, their spouse um, really is I think at the root cause of a lot of their hostility, aggression, delusion, and really a main motivator in much of their life. And as each person is unique, I mean, just, you know, like people are, I mean, I don't believe you can just like, you know, box somebody in and say, oh, you've got this, you know, disorder perfectly. I mean, you know, maybe psychologists will have to arrive at a diagnosis, but, you know, each person is unique and kind of expresses the disorder uniquely and probably has a different experience of it, just like people would have a different experience with diabetes or heart issues or COPD. I mean, people experience it and deal with it in different manners depending on their environment and their unique situation. Um, but I'm really coming to feel through my research and knowledge that a lot of that fear of abandonment, it really sets them apart really from the narcissist because the narcissist is really you know very self-centered very um, you know very devoid of empathy and feel for others you know and then the psychopath you know really has no morality so it gives them the ability to just really hurt people and break laws and act immor immorally without feeling bad or having any remorse whatsoever I mean they literally you know th the walls just can c come down I mean there's no there's no end for them. Uh, the, the psychopath has absolutely no moral um, sort of barriers. They, they really aren't inhibited by that, whereas most people would be af afraid of, of certain things. Um, you know, and, but I think the borderline person personality, especially in the female, um, will react in such a way as to like alienate and really prevent much of what is needed in their life, for example, you know, the and they act out of, pro, of projection. So in other words, they're very fear of abandonment. Um, their fear of their significant other leaving them. Uh, they're concerned that they could be replaced. Uh, something else could be more important to their spouse than them. Uh, fear that, you know, they, they might not find them attractive or they might not find them worthwhile. It propels them into all sorts of behaviors, you know, uh, to keep them pleased, but you know, really kind of an, I don't want to say a shallow basis, but a, a very detached and alienating basis, for example, um, you know, involving all sorts of cleaning ac activities, you know, keep the house uh, immaculate clean, um, uh, keep, you know, things uh, for the kids, keep the kids dressed, keep them happy, but yet, you know, possibly uh, not keep the kids happy, but you know, dress them you know, uh, send them to school, all the outer makings of a good child rearing, you know, take them on a vacation or provide tool, uh, toys for them, yet they won't have an emotional connection to them. They're, it's, a, it's a very superficial sort of relationship that they engage in and they partake in, and so what ends up happening is they end up alienating the very 
uh, experience, they really end up pushing away the very experience at which they're seeking to not push away. So in other words, they end up creating what they call the self-fulfilling prophecy where you know someone who could be so important to them for example you know their child who could be you know hidden to them you know this is you know this child is so important to me but I'm so afraid of losing them that I'm going to abuse them I'm going to mistreat them I'm going to yell at them I'm going to push them away I'm never going to draw them to me because in that I'm projecting my fear of abandonment onto this child so that they can then display all of the sadness, all of the hurt, all of the loss that that mother is feeling inside. So rather than the mother dealing with her own feelings, the projection onto that by abusive, by um, being harsh, by being critical, by being blaming, by being suspicious, by not relating to that child, it creates a huge gap where they really cannot relate whatsoever. They almost cannot have a relationship. And then that child suffers immensely. Their life is not able to take, you know, the, the path that it would supposed to have been if they had a healthy mother. Their life is way off track because they don't have that maternal guidance. And then even maybe that paternal guidance and love and support that should have been there originally, they've projected and created that so that that child can then experience all the suffering, all the loss, all the isolation, all of the distance, all of the feeling like they don't belong, uh, all the feeling of you know insecurity and that stormy feeling. They're then created in a situation where they have to take that around with them as it was implanted by that borderline female. And so it, it creates an externalization of that fear. So the borderline doesn't have to take responsibility and deal with it. They're thrusting it all on the child for them to deal with and experience. And some, I think, children never, you know, are able to get over it. Um, you know, and some children, as they grow up and they realize, you know, mothers are supposed to be different or, you know, it's not good to be, you know, freaking out all the time and hanging all the, having all these anger spells and angry outbursts and... You know, it makes me feel embarrassed and I can't have friends over and I feel like I don't even have a parent. You know, I've, it's a very isolating sort of experience to be with a borderline, um, you know, especially when they're freaking out all the time and doing that 180, you know, where you're just like, how did this even come from? You don't understand the organic genesis of it. It's really um, created from a faulty uh, brain you know, processing uh, that is taking place in their emotional center and their impulse control. And, you know, um, which has its origins in, you know, maybe in an earlier abusive trauma or even, you know, uh, genetically. So um, it's very confusing to be with these people. And if you've been on the brunt of um, a borderline personality in the relationship and you feel like you've lost a lot of time, of guidance, of direction, um, where there's you, you feel that sense of emptiness, I feel it for you. Um, it's very, very devastating, and I would say it's very dangerous because it's not only the loss that um, one is dealing with from those types of people, but it's also like a double, a double dip of, of loss because not only does that person, you know, mistreat you through depersonalization, suspiciousness, kind of these illusions of certain things, these unreal uh, standards and expectations, perfectionism. You know, not only do they, you know, try to create that, which is, you know, almost a psychotic or illusory in nature, you know, they're al also uh, depriving the child of just a general nurturing, guiding, loving relationship. And it, it, it creates really kind of a loveless uh, experience which is not very positive. So um, I hope this perspective helps and you see that, you know, kind of the, you know, the origin and the genesis of some of this behavior. And so you can identify it and then just kind of create kind of a, a shelter for yourself against it because if you're on the repeated battering, it usually becomes a little bit worse or more pronounced with time.